My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Thank you, Inferno, for that last second. Alerts off. I appreciate you. Thank you and everybody else who supports the channel. You guys are the best. Watch my Twitch.tv slash a.k.a. Mike B. Eh, about four or five days a week, you know. Please. <laughs> Chat, thank you so much for joining me today for another fantastic news. We got some shit to talk about. We got some. We have, we have a wholesome section that we're going to get to. We're going to get there eventually. We're going to get there eventually. The date is, by the way, July 22nd, 2022. 72222. It's a very hot day for some folks. It's going to be a very hot summer for others. Some of you folks in the UK hitting it pretty hard. Sorry to hear. Californian checking in. I feel you. I feel you. <laughs> the skies are red. <laughs> 722 22. That's right. That's right. Very special day. Actually, not really. It's just a regular day. But there's a lot of twos in it. First story of the day. Uh, it's actually kind of a uh, it's a follow up to a story we've been covering for a while here on uh, Just News with uh, me and chat. Uh, and it has to do with Elon Musk. Uh, so the latest in news on this on Elon Musk trying to buy Twitter is that Twitter is filing a lawsuit in Delaware to uh, to uh, force Elon to buy uh, Twitter for forty four million dollars because of all the bullshittery that he pulled while he was trying to uh, while he was pretending to buy it right or whatever allegedly going to buy it but on the surface kind of looked like he was just pretending to buy it making a big joke out of it and that's covered in the actual complaint. And I probably would have just glossed over this it's been, and just not even mentioned it on today's news, but I thought it was really interesting that all of the tweets and shit that he was just, just fucking just shit posting are actually in here. <laughs> like there's, this is one of the more serious ones, but it says right here, as part of this complaint, it says later that day, Musk tweeted publicly uh, that uh, a misrepresentation that Twitter's sample size for spam estimates was just a hundred. Right, you guys, we talked about this. Right, talked about he's going to defeat spam bots. Spam bots. It said the next day he boasted publicly that he had violated his non-disclosure obligations. <laughs> so they're like, he's kind of treating this whole thing like a fucking joke. You know, like, it's just, it's, <laughs> look at it. Musk responded with another disparaging tweet. It's tweet with a fucking. Sh Poop emoji. <laughs> so he's <laughs> so they're basically pointing out it's like all of this shit posting he's doing, he's not treating this seriously. He's he's devaluing the brand while he's trying to fucking buy it. And so they're like, fuck it, you have to buy it now. Like they're gonna try to force him to purchase the damn thing. Um, which I mean I still hope that, you know, that he doesn't, <laughs> of course. But um, but yeah, it's just thought it was kind of interesting that some of these tweets are in here. I mean, tweets, tweets, as we've learned over the past four and a half years, five years, uh, you know, those can be taken into consideration uh, during any kind of legal or even toss terms of service things with Twitch. Twitch monitoring the stuff that you say you can't go on Twitter and drop a and drop a slur and expect to just get away scot free. Some reports I said Twitch would be like, wow, this guy's a shithead on Twitter, but he seems cool on Twitch. Nah, we'll let him go. So it is it is kind of hilarious. Oh yeah, here he goes. This is the one I was looking for. <laughs> this is the one right here. <laughs> Uh, so it's <laughs> uh, so here he goes. It says, in the early morning of July 11th, Eastern Time Musk posted tweets implying that his data requests were never intended to make progress towards consummating the merger, but rather were part of a plan to force litigation in which Twitter's information would be publicly disclosed. Now he totally shit posted this, right? He definitely did not intend for it to come across that he meant all this, but. That's up for a jury to decide now, or judge, is that, you remember this tweet here, is that they said I couldn't buy Twitter, then they they, they wouldn't disclose bot info, now they want to force me to buy Twitter in court, now they have to disclose a bot info in court. Checkmate, all this stuff, so stupid. He's so, he just can't shut the fuck up. So for Musk, it would seem Twitter, the interest of its stockholders, and the transaction must agree to, and the court process to enforce it all, constitutes an elaborate joke. So, fuck. I mean, the guy, he's the richest man in the world, so I guess, I guess you just buy it and then just, I don't know, do nothing with it if you wanted to, or whatever, but Jesus Christ. Uh, he'll just, he'll end up just shrugging this thing off and then moving on, I guess. The discovery is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If he was blatant stock manipulation, he should kind of get kicked out, kicked in the dick for it. Yeah, well, we'll see. What, what, what is that crime? We'll just gloss over that one. <laughs> 
probably also violated a signed SEC probation period. Yeah, but we'll see what other things he violated and if anything happens because typically things don't happen to rich people. So, you know, it's probably gonna big, big gonna be a big nothing burger. Which I've used that word so many times. Like, not a burger, and oh, it's, it's, apparently there's a lot of nothing shit going on. Uh, he's also a giant troll. If he wasn't a billionaire, he'd be on 4chan shit posting. Oh yeah, for sure. So, hmm. So we'll see, we'll see. We got other shitty news to get through. Actually, this one's kind of funny. I think a lot of you guys will appreciate it. So, <clears throat> during a uh, during a uh, uh, um, a keynote that was sponsored by a uh, a whole bunch of of NFT and, and different crypto uh, companies and startups and everything uh, that was discussing how the future of gaming you know, what's the future of gaming like, you know, and of course, like how it ties into uh, blockchain technology and all of this. So during this, uh, during this presentation, one of the guest speakers who is a, uh, who's a developer, he made a game, he made a turn-based game back in 2015 called Chroma Squad, uh, overwhelmingly positive. Uh, it was supposed to be kind of like a Power Rangers, you know, like inspired by Power Rangers, uh, turn base. It looks pretty good. I never played it, but it looks pretty fucking good. <laughs> it has great reviews. Anyway, so he invited him on to talk about the future of, of video games. Uh, and literally, that was the, the topic of discussion. Um, <clears throat> supposed to be uh, future video games. And then he comes on. This is translated here, but from what I verified, it's pretty accurate. Uh, and it says, uh, it says, uh, lecture by Mark entitled The Future of Video Games Started Like This. I fooled you guys. The name of my talk is not Future of Video Games. I had to change it or they wouldn't approve. The name is Because NFT is a Nightmare. So essentially the name is NFTs are a nightmare for the industry. And he got a standing ovation from the, from the crowd in the room. Everybody loved it. There was you know, obviously lots of like <laughs> of sponsors and everything that were related, that were crypto related, blockchain related, NFT related. Um, and so he had to sneak this one in here and he did. He got out there. He did a whole presentation about uh, uh, about how NFTs are bad for for video games. So kudos to that guy uh, for getting <laughs> the con already knew about it. Well, whatever the the not the not the um, people paying the money. I'm sure, but uh, or they would have stopped him. I'm sure, they would have stopped him. And if they did know about it, they couldn't do anything to stop him. So. But yeah, so uh, good for him, good for them. Uh, and he does say, he does say here, and again, this is translation here, but again, I've verified that this is pretty accurate. Um, see, these people are outsiders here. They're not important, says uh, Venturelli. Uh, they're just trying to buy their relevance because they have no actual influence over the future of our industry. If you just give them this space uncontested, you're just giving them exactly what they want and buying their narrative that they are relevant. And that's, that's a lot of what we've been saying. That's a lot of what we've, we've all been saying, and it's just nice to have somebody get up there who is in game dev, who is willing to, to, to you know, get up there and pull a fast one on them and everything. It's good. It's good. It's good. I mean, we kind of need to do this everywhere because they do have a lot of money. We see it happen all over the place where uh, where individuals um, uh, get caught up in uh, in less than kosher uh, ways, but still legal ways of making money. You can say like unethical um, ways of making money, despite their their fans, you know, not say approval, but this kind of goes against what they what they're what they're known for. Less money than they had uh, did four months ago. What is that? Oh yeah, the uh, thing. Except NFT is not art; it's art. Oh, qu qu quotation marks. Um, they have enough money to try and shove it down our throats till it becomes the norm, and then that's a real problem. Exactly. So more of this, more of this, more of these statements is great. These statements, sorry, is great. Um, <clears throat> Adrian pictures are not even copyrightable. Ooh, that's a whole nother discussion that we're not going to talk about today, but feel free continue. Curious to see where that goes. Uh, also speaking out about NFTs, we have Minecraft, Minecraft creator, Microsoft. They put out a whole very narrow column of text. Um, <laughs> I, th I thought that was just because they zoomed in before, but apparently not. Um, where they talk about Minecraft NFTs. Uh, here is the TLDR says to ensure that Minecraft players have a safe and inclusive experience. Blockchain technologies are not permitted to be integrated inside our Minecraft client and server applications, nor may they be utilized to create NFTs associated with any in-game content. So this is word, worded very specifically, um, where they're saying that uh, they're not the, te the blockchain technologies are not permitted in the clients or in the server. They just don't want it in the game. They don't care what you do outside of it, right? They're not trying to say, you know, oh, you can't 
you know, be involved with NFTs and buy and sell your shit elsewhere. They have a platform for all this stuff. They just don't want you guys using the a the API or in-game tech, uh, like mods and everything like that to like send tokens and all that shit and make payments in the Minecraft interface. They don't want that, right? <clears throat> And so, uh, so I went through and see like, well, who was hit by this? Like, obviously, if they make a statement, then there's probably a company out there who's who was standing to benefit from this, uh, maybe hasn't benefiting from this, and now they have to figure something else out. And sure enough, one of the biggest ones called NFT Worlds. It says their Minecraft-based NFT project in disarray after Minecraft bans NFTs. NFT Worlds, uh, they generate or they collect or whatever. Um, uh, skins. I mean, I have them all right here, actually. Uh, let's start with with their main thing. I actually have here's their OpenSea account. I went through and I dug through here and I saw this. Here's World Two Three Five Eight. Uh, I actually I, I I was a little confused by this at first because I was like, surely they don't mean that they're selling <laughs> uh, a chunk, <laughs> a generated chunk um, seed for. $2,820. Now that number fluctuates, right? It could be $3,000 by the end of the day. It could be $2,500 by the end of the day. But all that matters is that it's not a dollar. It's also not free. Uh, somebody generated this. You can, and they even have a system. Uh, they have a viewer. If you want to go through and preview your world that you're buying, your chunk that you're buying, you could go through and it's like, oh, wow, look at this. I could do some little bit of planning here. Whoa. It's like you're playing actual Minecraft. It's pretty cool, actually. You go, oh, yeah, look at that. It's like uh, it's like checking out real estate in real life, except for it's virtual and in a game. <laughs> in a game that's not necessarily built around this, but they built mods in order to support this system. So, yeah, this this could be yours. Oh, 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 oh gosh, all that stuff. That's secret stuff. It's a secret stuff. I'm supposed to see that stuff. Look at that. Wow, therefore completely useless. Now, this, what are you talking about, man? This is beachfront property. This is prime. Prime beachfront property. Right there. All it's going to cost you is, let's go check again, $2,820, one cent, 1.83 Ethereum. One Ethereum is $1,539 right now, as as it says right here on the floor. So, so what that's... I wonder how much... Um, uh, how much they've made before this a fucking lot a fucking lot. So let's let's back up a little bit <clears throat> We take a look at their total volume their total volume is uh, is 51.3 uh, thousand Ethereum so 50 basically 50,000 times 1.5 so um, uh, 50 no sorry 50,000 times 1.5 thousand yeah, yeah, because that's where it's at right now. And also it could fluctuate too because they're probably selling things back when Ethereum was priced, uh, was valued much higher at like 3000 Right now, uh, uh, Ethereum is, is, is at a low. It's in a lull right now. Uh, they're calling it a crypto winter where like basically all crypto kind of shifted and dropped. Uh, and now it's kind of cruising. It's still going up, still going down. Like Ethereum has recovered a little bit. Like it was at like a like a 1100 or something like that, probably a, less than a month ago. Uh, and now it's at the 1500. That's how volatile this is. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, so who knows how much actual money this is, but it's definitely in the millions, millions, millions. Of course it is. Of course it is. But they 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 didn't just monetize world. I thought it was just this. And I was like, cool. So they make world. I mean, it's called nft world so maybe that's what it is but actually it goes back a little bit um i saw this nft world's vault and i was like oh they must have other things too let's see what else they have of course they have they have skins and they have um yeah, yeah avatar all this stuff so look you all these avatars you could buy uh genesis avatar how about this one right here here's an avatar for 100 bucks 100 bucks yeah 100 bucks not too bad 100 bucks for a skin i guess it's, that's a deal of some sort right um fuck <laughs> this one's a hundred bucks also wow best offer i mean that's the best offer it might go up from that i'm not sure you'll stick with real land but what about skins man you can't buy these anywhere else <sighs> you can't get these anywhere else these are unique people will see this and they'll be like wow you got one of those best offer a hundred what they're all like the same offer hold on a second that <laughs> must be the initial offer that's <laughs> maybe they don't maybe they don't have any offers uh but they do have a lot here it is they created uh twenty one thousand eight hundred. so they've made a big built a business a huge business around around Minecraft, essentially. So they have to pivot and find some other way to make money. They could still sell things, but because uh, it's not it's not all integrated like it was before, that's hurting them a lot. And you can actually see that here with their activity. Their average price here 
I realize you might be kind of hard to see. Is there a bigger window here? Probably not. Let me go ahead and zoom out or zoom in, whatever. You could see here that, uh, you know, they kind of, they're slowly descending in terms of of average price. and uh, But the sales have kind of just up and down, up and down over here. But then they skyrocket. The sales skyrocket, but the average price goes down significantly. We look at right here. Here's July 19th. This is before the announcement that Minecraft was going to be uh, banning um, NFTs and blockchain technology inside of their servers uh, and clients. Um, but here it says the average price was 3.3 uh, Ethereum uh, with volume movements of 53 and then the number of sales is 16. And then we see the very next day, uh, the price drops uh, remarkably uh, down to an average price of just one Ethereum uh, with a huge amount of volume and a number of sales, a 557 number of sales. So it seems like it's a uh, uh, it's a clearance sale. <laughs> Everyone's trying to trying to sell and get out of there uh, uh, and get things out of here. I mean, you see right here, like this shit's selling right now. This world, world number 54, uh, it was just purchased seven minutes ago for 2.42 ethereum so about three thousand seven hundred dollars we could take a look at this one uh here's the world they purchased and then we could click on uh there's a way to get i mean i'll just copy the number here let me see dun, dun, dun. let me get this world here we go nft worlds so number 54 huh so if i take this off and i just put number 54 i should be able to see this world oh fuck, of course <laughs> just this part thank you 54 uh oh oh here we go and this is the world that this guy just bought. Is it worth it? What do you think? It's kind of a nice little island, right? <laughs> like, why? Who the fuck are we buying this? I don't know, man. I don't know, but they do. And I, I, what are they trying to shoot? Are they trying to, like, show this off to? It's got a nice little lake, I guess. Your own private island in Minecraft. You can't even, like, inject this. I mean, I don't know. Can you? Can you inject this into somebody else's server? I guess you probably could. But then syncing it up or aligning it with other... Uh, generated chunks i feel like that would be just uh, a huge huge hassle <laughs> they just took skins off of a minecraft skin site you know uh, michael give seth green his nft back uh, anyways yeah it's uh it's just property speculation but in game people are buying and feel like they can flip it look up world 7271 uh oh uh oh why what's happening here let me see 7271 Whoa, what the hell? Oh, this is a tall one. What the fuck? Whoa. Well, this is an interesting one, at least. But still, how much is this selling for? <laughs> how much is this selling for? Oh, man. What is it, like a coronavirus or something? <laughs> For two? This is only only selling for two? For two Ethereum? I love this viewer, by the way. This viewer is fucking dope. But um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. What are these like wire blocks? I feel like this would just wreck my actual in-game frame rate. <laughs> oh man. Anyways, so <clears throat> so yeah, Minecraft is uh is basically saying, nah, not all that bullshit. Um and you know, it's not, it's not, this is not surprising. They found a way to make a shitload of money off of Minecraft. And so off of somebody else's game. So that game is going to do what they can to kind of mitigate some of that while also not necessarily decrying or saying that it's not something they're ever going to do. Nowhere in this did Minecraft say we are not going to ever support blockchain technology they said that they're going to watch the market and then see where it goes from there, right? Um, what if Notch is behind this? The site? <laughs> so I doubt it. Are you kidding me? The guy's a fucking multi-billionaire. He doesn't give a shit. <laughs> He's just going to be just lonely. Poor guy. Living up in his mountain mountain uh, terrace. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so they're not saying that they're going to uh, completely walk away from NFTs and blockchain technology. Just that they'll keep an eye on the market and see if it's something they could, you know, it's, they'll keep an eye on. Make, they want to keep it fair. They want to keep it fair for everybody. Now, uh, somebody asked Tim Sweeney uh, if he would take the same stance with, with uh, Epic, and, and uh, he, he made a statement on Twitter saying something along the lines of how um, they don't believe that a platform should have any say in the way that people you know play their games or make money or whatever uh but you know it's not it's not really a uh, an official statement you know you can say whatever he wants on twitter but when it comes on actual policy we'll see uh, also he's not really addressing uh, any particular like specific issue 
uh, that it, that even remotely relates to what Minecraft is is going through with you know integrated blockchain uh, systems and utilities in the client and the server uh, uh, software. So so for for Sweeney, he could just say that and say whatever he wants. But this this is apples and oranges, you know, like. <laughs> yeah so notch and uh, don't give a shit he's jerking out some bathroom he got over uh he got over beyonce <laughs> the fuck <laughs> what <laughs> domino thank you so much um so yeah so this is uh so th this this is something that we might revisit in the future and be like someone might say oh minecraft said they're not gonna do nfts well no they didn't they just want to be the ones probably making the money if it's something that they you know, Beyonce and Jay-Z got outbid by Notch for the house he's in. Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. I forgot about that. Jerking off in the bathroom. He got over Beyonce. <laughs> um, yeah, Tim Sweetie, not the plaf not not platforms place to decide. Also, Tim Sweetie, our platform doesn't have porn games because we aren't desperate. Mm hmm. Yeah, I would not say that that porn game's a result of Steam being desperate. That's a really shallow and stupid reply from Tim. <laughs> uh, all that happened was Steam was like, yeah, man, just post whatever you want. And Gabe was like, yeah, just post, you know, we'll, just, we'll try to keep it reasonable, I guess, you know, and the people start posting shit and they're like, all right, well, they're going to post that shit. It's fine. We'll put filters up so people can't see it. That's pretty much it. <laughs> Uh, they're the result of men being desperate. Yeah, well, you can just miss out on that money then. You see when the Fortnite money runs out, Tim, Timmy. Nah, but um, like I said, Tim plays no part in any of this stuff. So until Tim makes an official statement or an official stance or they have any any foot in the game when it comes to, uh, any skin in the game when it comes to NFTs and all that shit, then we're not worried about what he has to say about this. Just like, you don't have to worry about what I say about it. I would have much relevance as uh, Tim Sweeney in this situation. Maybe not. <laughs> Better than Microsoft with a Zoom Marketplace. We only curate the apps. What? Oh, 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 oh. Zoom Marketplace. What is that? <laughs> it went under in less than a year. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm familiar with the Zoom. I forgot they had a Marketplace. They had apps. I forgot all about all that. Jeez. Man. All right. So, <clears throat> speaking of CEOs, shut up sometimes. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the head of Unity, CEO, the CEO of Unity, uh, John Riccatiello, Rich Riccatiello, Rick Riccatiello. Uh, he came out and he said in an interview, "Oh, this bitch! Oh, this bitch!" He says, "I'll just quote this place right here. This 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 part right here. There's so much shit happening here. I, this all these ads." Uh, can I block this? This is very obnoxious. I can't read anything. <laughs> block element. Let's see how this works. Create this one. This one. Create. Will that work? Oh, my God. I can actually read. Thank God. Uh, let's see. So uh, it says devs who shun monetization are pure brilliant and fucking idiots. So I went through and I, re I read this, um, this interview. And, you know, he is the, he's the CEO of Unity. We should also remember that he is the CEO of, or he was a CEO of EA. Here's a recording from 2010 when he talked about, when he's talking about, he's talking about uh, monetization in uh, in EA games, okay? And this is very familiar to a lot of folks, right? So we'll go and play this. Hopefully this is loud enough. The second thing, and this is a point that I think might be lost on many, is a big and substantial portion of digital revenues or microtransactions. When you are six hours into playing Battlefield and you run out of ammo in your clip and we ask you for a dollar to reload, you're really not very price sensitive at that point in time. Um, and for what it's worth, the cogs on the clip really low. And so um, essentially what ends up happening and the reason the, the play first, pay later model works so nicely is the consumer gets engaged in a property, they might spend 10, 20, 30, 50 hours on the game. And then when they're deep into the game, they're well invested in it. We're not gouging, but we're charging. And at that point in time, the commitment can be pretty high. As a personal anecdote, I've spent about $5,000 calendar year to date on doing just this thing, this type of thing on our products and others. Um, I can readily attest to uh, how well it works. 
So yes, there was some. Th this is the only copy of this that I could find. So hopefully it doesn't get flagged. But yes, there's there's a little bit of like I think it's like Imperial Star Wars music or something like that in the background. Um, he has a super user account, Diggy Diggy Hole. So this is 2010, 2010 that uh, that he made this statement that he was the EA CEO uh, at the time. We know we know what happened between 2010, 2020 uh, in all EA games, and now I shouldn't say not 2020, but until it's current current year um it's just it's just i mean it's monetization hell for the most part so here he's talking about um as now the ceo of unity uh he's bringing some of that same flavor uh and he's talking about it very frankly about how you have to you have to build games with monetization in mind otherwise you're, you're an idiot uh, and i read some of this and you know what he has a few fair points he's a few fair points let me see if i can find the uh actual quote in here let's so have to search um yeah here we go so he says it's implementing. Okay. Uh, see, so start up here. So it comes down to a couple of key aspects. This is Witten. I should go back to Riccatelli. Here we go. Uh, it says Ferrari. The question is implementing monetization early in the process and conversation is certainly an angle that has been push, seen uh, pushback from some developers. And so he says Ferrari and some of the other high end car manufacturers still use clay and carving knives. It's a very small portion of the gaming industry that works that way. And that and some of these people are my favorite people in the world to fight with. They're the most beautiful and pure, brilliant people. They also have some of the biggest fucking idiots. Uh, <laughs> I've been in the gaming industry longer than most anybody getting into the gray hair and all that uh it used to be the case that developers would throw their game over the wall to the publicist and sales force with literally no interaction beforehand that model is baked into the philosophy of a lot of art forms and medium and it's one i am deeply respectful of i know their dedication and care but this industry divides people between those who still hold to that philosophy and those who massively embrace how to figure out what makes a successful product and i don't know if it's a successful artist anywhere that doesn't care about what their player thinks this is where the cycle of feedback comes uh, comes back. They can choose to ignore it, but to choose to not know at all is uh, is not a great call. And so here you go. I've seen the games. I've seen great games fail because they tuned their compulsion loop to two minutes when it should have been an hour. Sometimes you wouldn't even notice a product difference between a massive success and tremendous fail, but for its but for this tuning and what it does to the attrition rate, there isn't a developer on the planet that wouldn't want that knowledge. So he's saying that. Uh, that you know, in the past and still today, like people want to make art, they want to make games, they want to make whatever kind of art they can, and then they want to throw it over to to sales and figure out how to market it after the fact. And he's saying you can't do that anymore. In order to make a successful game, you have to figure out how to keep people in the loop uh, for a good amount of time, and then also monetize that loop somehow. Um, <clears throat> and so, while this goes against the, well, how a lot of us feel about how games should be represented and how what we should doing we should be doing with games, um, this is how the industry does work and it's I mean, he's saying not to say the quiet part out loud he's just laying out what we already know but in some you know, in words that are very direct <laughs> uh they say but is anyone hear that right now over the blaring headlines of devs being fucking idiots uh, yeah I know. <laughs> yeah that was not that was not a good choice of words he did he did come back he did come back and i won't read this whole thing but he did come back and he did say uh that he regrets using crude language all right He's a gamer, guys. Come on, you had a gamer moment, okay? You got to give him, you got to cut him some slack or something, right? Uh, but you know, uh, Dean Hall, Daisy Dean Hall, Rocket Two Guns. He posted a, a, a thread series where he also talks about um, about how John is. Mm, he's kind of right. So he says, uh, I really wanted to make some tweets about how John is, is terrible and he's wrong, but actually what nobody has acknowledged is that he is right and that and that's what is so wrong because of a general devaluation of expected costs of games. Coupled with increasing player expectations as a developer, you face the risk of even moderately successful titles being completely unprofitable. While many of us, myself included, make games regardless if they make money, at the moment, consumers are clearly choosing that what John is saying. We took anti-DRM, anti-games uh, as a service stances and... Uh, and don't regret them and stand by them, but they were terrible revenue and reception decisions. We sit here pretending that Riccatello is wrong. Because indies are great, many in, many indies uh, so uh, is wrong because many because indies are great. But many uh, of the indies will not survive this recession. If they're making hobby games and they are rich, then I guess that's fine. But that's not a lot of people. <laughs> Anyways, if you think John McTell is wrong, stop saying it. Prove it with your wallet. Buy the games you love at full price. Support your favorite indies on Patreon. And help them out and tell your friends. As it stands, I hate everything John said, but he's absolutely right. You are an idiot if you don't monetize the crap out of your game because even relatively successful games are becoming unprofitable and nobody is talking about that. And, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, like, he's just, it's kind of a base interview, man. Like, he's kind of saying what 
what we need to hear. And we have to choose whether or not we like that, right? Not Dean. Dean is just re further reinforcing that point by, sh by telling you, it's like, yo, he, Dean is a game developer. He has put out games since Daisy mod. Um, and they have seen, you know, various uh, forms of success. Um, but is Merger the Iron Source the way to do that? I mean, I don't know the in regards to the merger and how they want to handle that. I feel like that's that's a different discussion. This is just general game dev and how how all game developers must think, right? Uh, we're, we're we're going on that route with uh, with how they uh, how they are being told they have to monetize early if they want to have any kind of of uh, of success. See, what I don't understand why is he completely excluding hobby game devs? Because um, because the, the the more we go into a potential recession, which seems more and more likely, where people are not able to just spend their time making a game for fun um, because they can afford to live life and make a game, uh, you're going to start excluding a lot of indie game devs who just can't have, they don't have that luxury. And so you're going to get people that have money that can make uh, games as a hobby who are going to be the only ones going to be able to afford, who will be able to afford doing in the future. Now, this is, this is not going to be a fully exclusive statement. Like, like we're not saying that literally everyone in the world is not going to be able to make games anymore. It, but, but I mean, if you, if you think about just, you know, if you think about a, a world or even a couple of nations or countries where they're not able to uh, even have basic support systems for financially, uh, then you're not going to be spending a lot of your time working on a game that may or may not make you any money. Right. It seems like a lousy argument. Well, I don't think so. I disagree. I think it kind of makes sense. We don't really know what to expect if, uh, if, uh, if a recession hits and, and, People can't spend their, their time doing things that they love to do uh, because they can't make any money doing it, that they find something else to do. Um, I mean, I think that's pretty valid, you know? Um, I mean, I don't have the numbers on like how many indie games were developed over, let's say, the you know quarantine period uh, with, with coronavirus. Um, but, but I mean, I think it kind of makes sense, you know? Like if you, if you are working a part-time job and also working on a game, uh, well, your game could make no money because if you're not if you don't have a, a a game that changes the industry and makes a shitload of money and it's also fully monetized um then you're probably not going to turn a profit on it so you either what you keep on putting time towards that uh towards that game that probably won't make you any money or you go find another job and have two part-time jobs i mean we could also talk about games that have not have no microtransactions but have made huge numbers that is community driven that have given them way longer li life shelf well, I mean, I, we could probably find examples of this, right? We could probably, but there's a lot of indie devs. There's a lot, right? And you know this, Miss. Like, there's a there's a lot of, uh, uh, sorry, uh, Himes, uh, yellow text. Uh, there's a lot of, of of game devs out there. They're not they're not all making any kind of any kind of significant cash or anything. Uh, like, fine, I get it. You can't make games anymore. That sucks. But why would you say someone is stupid for not trying to pursue a game dev career? What if you want to keep a, a hobby regardless? You could give up on your hobby temporarily, which sucks, but I think it's also completely acceptable. Uh, is he saying? Is he saying that you're stupid for? I, I, oh, he's, okay. He's, oh, so, so the argument that he's he's saying that if you don't monetize your game, then then you're not. No, you can. He's saying you can continue making games. I mean. Uh, but you're just not going to make any money, right? He says right here, he says, because indies are great, he says, but many indies will not survive this recession. If they're making hobby games and they are rich, then I guess it's fine, but that's what an exclusive pool that is, right? And that's, that's, that's the, I mean, that's the argument there. It's like, see, he doesn't say that they're idiots for not doing matches. He's saying that they're stupid for not planning monetization strategy during development, right? Yeah, that's what, that's what John was saying. Uh, Dean is just basically echoing it, saying, I mean, he's kind of right. He's saying he's kind of right. You can make a game. You could have, you could have a game that's just like, I built that in my free time. I love this. You know, it's going to take me years to develop. And you can still do that for sure. But if you think about like the huge pool of any developers that are in the world right now, how many of them are going to be able to afford doing it if their main cash flow, which is not developing this indie game, uh, is cut off for whatever reason? Are we going to see more Kickstarters that are going to, and then we're going to have a wash of Kickstarters all over the place and then no one's going to be able to, to have anything hit their goals or, or are they just going to stop making games? Probably a little bit of both. Um, uh, can still make a hobby games, not be rich. You can still make hobby games and not be rich. Oh, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. People could do YouTube. People could do YouTube as a hobby. Yeah, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, a lot of jobs and professions where you know you could start. Like for example, what I do, right? Like this started off as a hobby, and now it's what I do. Um, it's something that you know, if a recession hit, and let's just say that 
all of you guys are broke. Therefore, you're not giving me any more money. I might have to find something else to make money so I could survive with my family, right? So that's what I'm saying. Like, this is, I love doing this. This is a passion project. It does make money. Not a lot, <laughs> not a lot, but it does make money. Um, but it's something that I wouldn't be able to keep up. Now, there's a lot, there's, now, I, I'm like, in, in this space, I'm like medium dev, right? I'm like medium dev, medium game, right? Uh, uh, there's a million trillion people who are in the super small indie dev space who are not even going to be able to start pursuing this hobby. Who are not even going to be able to start, uh, yeah, number 777. Thank you. That's right. That's right. Number 777. Uh, they're not, they're not going to be able to maintain this, right? And so this, this same thing is going to happen in all spaces, right? The ones who are, uh, uh, who are trying to get it started to turn a hobby into a career, you're going to have the, the most struggles. Um, you miss those rankings so much. <laughs> um, what up, Cannibal? Yeah, I'm the same guy. <laughs> There's a lot of gray in this kind of thing. You talking about Tom? Oh, I sorry, talking about this. Uh, it's also a gray in this kind of thing, and not just a blanket black and white like the interview is pointing it to it being. Yeah, yeah. He's. I mean, he even when he says that you know for crude for his crude um, uh, uh, language, it was it was it was a knee jerk response. It was definitely like a, a pointed response that he didn't necessarily need to make. But I get it. Like he was just kind of like, oh man, you're fucking idiot if you don't do this. I don't know why he said that as a CEO, right? It's like it's really not something you ever fucking say. <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah man like it's it's uh i mean shit it's 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 kind of right he's kind of right what an asshole what an asshole <laughs> so it's like you need to get the point across yeah exactly so so who so anyways moving on speaking of assholes this is actually this this one's uh uh I mean, this one's this one's on riot this time. Um, so this one probably probably actually went uh, under the radar for a lot of you guys because I know a lot of, not a lot of you guys follow esports stuff. Who? <laughs> but 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 um, who? <laughs> the white dude I have who lived in Michigan. Oh, who? <laughs> Well, he said in the past too, as CEO of EA, he wished Call of Duty would not um, would rot from the core. Well, that's what NFTs do. Or no, that's what. Sorry, <laughs> that's what loot boxes do. Uh, anyways, so uh, uh, Riot has um, LCS, the uh, League Championship Series that they do, right? Um, and and statistically. Uh, LCS has been underperforming year over year uh, because popularity of league has just slowly gone down. Um, and whatever other decisions that Riot is making that may have, may or may not have had a negative impact on viewership in uh, with, uh, uh, with with league related uh, esports. So for whatever reason, um, Double Lift, who is a very popular personality in the space uh he was suspended from co-streaming lcs because usually a lot of people co-stream right uh because he said that league was dying um and but it was in context where he was saying that riot had made a a, a very poor decision where they will not allow uh bjergsen who is another very prominent very good league player uh participate in a competition between mr beast and ninja so Mr. Beast, probably the biggest content creator in the world, right? Um, Ninja, obviously well, well, well known in the in the streaming space, regardless of what your feelings are for him. Um, these two huge forces decided to have a, a, a for fun, probably charity, whatever tournament, and they wanted to invite Bjergsen, who is a very well-known player in the league space, to come and participate. And Riot said no. They could. They wouldn't let him do it. Free promotion. Free promotion from some of the biggest content creators for what is ostensibly a dying game. Still, they said no. So here is Double Lift in his own words talking about it. Got headshot. Your boy got headshot by LCS a couple days ago. I was talking about how LCS was so stupid. Uh, for not letting Bjergsen play the Mr. Beast tournament, and I think I said the words LCS is dying. Okay, so now we fast forward here. 
he does his, he does he does his whole thing. He's he's kind of laughing about it, right? And then he goes on and he says he says here he's like as part of his apology, as part of his apology. Okay, and as a token of my apology, I wanted to correct my statement. LCS is not dying. And they're not stupid. Actually, the league is thriving. You, you edited photo that I took right here, okay? So, th maybe... <laughs> As a token of my apology, it, it is absolutely going nuts. 236k <laughs> views. <laughs> so, in this, it, maybe it's hard to see, but in this, he's doubling down. He's showing that he's... he. MS painted on a two uh, in front of the uh, in front of the viewer count. <laughs> so he's doubling down on it. Uh, <laughs> double it, doubling down exactly. <laughs> so, so yeah, like what the fuck? What the fuck? What a huge alpha riot, man! Like how stupid do you have to like? How like? <sighs> Why would you not want some of your biggest people to participate in, in in a huge tournament for free? He even says he's like they couldn't pay in his original in his original message where he got he got you know blocked from uh, from streaming LCS. Um, he he even said he's like you couldn't pay enough money for that kind of promotion, and now they're gonna block it for playing, and they're gonna block double lift. It's like a double whammy, man. They just there's like now every now everybody in the league space knows what they did to not just Bjergsen. But that also to to double lift, and also to the game because people in this space they don't like seeing these numbers of thirty six thousand people watching LCS. Nobody wants to see numbers that low for such a huge game or what should have been or what used to be such a huge game. They want their game to survive. They want their game to do better. They want to do whatever they can uh, to, to to. They want the company to do whatever they can to make that game to help that game thrive. As a StarCraft as a StarCraft esports viewer fan. I'm telling you, it sucks whenever the company behind the game doesn't do shit to help. <laughs> it sucks. It especially sucks when they go and shoot themselves in the foot like this. <sighs> the league pro scene has been in the drop since uh, 2018 Worlds. It's just not getting better, even though the game itself is mostly holding steady. Mm -hmm. So hope it's got Korean StarCraft 2 pros in his tournaments too. Yep. So, so, um... Yeah, so we'll. I don't know if I don't know if he's banned again. I don't know if he's whatever. But for them to also block him from restreaming it, like man, Stry Sand effect. Like, give me a fucking break. <laughs> um, yeah, some articles have popped. I feel like I only hear about a league when it's something bad. Yeah, well, um, falling hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, so it was a hundred fifty thousand dollars showdown, is what it was. Um, and then, yeah, there's just a bunch of articles in here where they're just talking about, yeah, they're just talking about random shit, but we already covered, uh, right. Right. Really likes being petty bitches over people being slightly insulting to them. Yeah, it's true. It seems to be true. I don't know if it's true. It seems, it seems like that might be the case. Um, but we did get some speaking of a game company that's trying their best to do good things by their, uh, by their peoples. Uh, we did see a new announcement at, uh, Tenocon. TennoCon is the Warframe convention that happens up in Canada every year. Uh, well, not every year now, but kind of. Um, and uh, this this announcement came from uh, from the team Warframe team, and they are Space Mom. Yes, Space Mom is being uh, uh, promoted within within I guess within the, uh, the the Warframe team to creative director, and Steve Sinclair is has moved to focus on a new game called soul frame uh here is the here's one of the pictures from this <laughs> uh, i love you know what man like i've 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 known these people right like i say known because it's the internet right um since they first got started and i remember like their first shows in like the the cafeteria of their office space or whatever it was in the corner of their office space um and uh, it's cool to see that they're at this point now where they're like, let's make another game and make it serious. So Soul Frame is a title that they are uh, uh, pursuing right now. That there's a trailer for it. There's a lot of there's a lot of questionable butt nudity that I'm not sure if I could show, so I won't show the trailer necessarily. Those pants are from the first dev streams that Steve would wear, and that's a big handoff. Oh yeah, yeah, it is pink pants. She gonna wear them? <laughs> She's such a fashionista. I bet she'd make it work. <laughs> 
She's got something in her closet that would, that would work with it. It's so, it's so frame. Just get your soul frame. <laughs> Uh, so he comes out and he says, uh, I love this. He says, Joseph Strange has been home for an entire development career, 20 plus years for those of us counting. And he says that 10 years, um, uh, he's working on, uh, he's working on Warframe, talk about Dark Sector a little bit. Uh, Dark Sector was the first game, kind of like a, a test bed for, uh, for what Warframe became. Um, a crash course in Soul Frame. That's right. <laughs> Thought it was Soul Frame. Oh, dang it. No, no, everyone was spelled it wrong. Uh, and so what I love here, though, is that, you know, he he does give a like, He says, like, you know, the team's still working on it. I'm going to work on this new thing. Uh, and then somewhere in here, I love this line. It's my favorite line in this whole thing. He says, I want to have fantasy and science fiction as part of just Digital Extreme's legacy. Da, 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 da. And then he says, my beard only has so much black left in it. And that made me go back and look at this picture. And I was like, wow, man. Like he's always he, to, from what I can remember of him back when I first started playing Warframe and for those several years following, like he always had like like a salt and pepper thing going in his beard. Uh, and now it's like all gray. Um, <laughs> I was like, oh, no, it's happening to all of us. Uh, but it's true. I love that line, though. It's like I, I only have so much uh, only have so much black left in my beard. That's one way to look at it. You got to do things while you still can. And so good. Good for D.E. Steve. New game. Time never stops. That's right. Time keeps on ticking, 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 ticking. Two drama. We got a little bit of drama today. Thank you, Tanneros. My uh, my my uh, 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 my my drama seeker, a drama news finder. Appreciate you on this one. Drama. Ew. This one's really. This one's actually kind of silly, but I want to go through it anyways because it's kind of funny too. <laughs> And also, I have my own personal like opinions on this too. Drama Queen. Um uh, Drama Llama Alert. So it started off with a story. Well, I didn't really start off with this. We'll, we'll start off with this story. It says Twitch streamers streamers hire video editors to make highlight videos and clips for devastating low pay and little recognition. My story about the increasing uh, precarity of streaming and how editors are left to pick up the crumbs. And on here we see, we see Pokey, we see Hassan, uh, we see some VTubers and we see some other guys. So, <laughs> I don't know everybody, okay? Oh God, oh God, oh boy. I know, I know, here it comes. So this article, Gotta get them clicks. Uh, so the article uh, goes over and talks about, uh, and it makes some pretty good points talking about, um, uh, let me see, actually, I, I, try, I actually have the the, the, the the article highlighted here. Here we go. So it, talking about what it's like to be an editor for a Twitch streamer. Right, and it says like here it is for exposure. It says uh, Twitch as a platform is hyper competitive, where streamers spend every second trying to grow their viewer count or at least keep it stable. With thousands of streamers live on Twitch every day, only the top 0.015% uh, of them make enough uh, to live on, according to data leaked from Twitch's internal records last year. Popular streamers like Dr. Lupo and Tim the Tatman move to other platforms where the pay is more consistent untied from the front line of attention uh, for attention on Twitch. But many don't get those opportunities and are stuck searching for what game or topic or gimmick will bring in viewers this week. He's not wrong. He's not wrong about this. This is a struggle that, I mean, I know a lot of you guys stream, so I know all of you guys feel me on this. It's like, what game or what shtick or what thing can we do this week to keep them numbers up, right? It's a tough, it's tough. And there's the right, the right. And so it says the editors below them pick up the crumbs. They take on jobs at a rate and workload that would be unfathomable in any other in industry. And they're often invisible to the people who watch their work. The relationship between streamer and editor is fraught because nothing on Twitch is stable. And, and so it's not me. Just I just have fun. Oh, that's good. I'm glad. No, please just have fun. Didn't do it. Just have fun. I mean, I have fun too. I mean, I'm not trying to say that I don't have fun, right? But it is a struggle to try to figure out where that fun is going to take place, right? Where can I have fun that also you guys would enjoy? And that's a struggle. That's such a fucking struggle for a content creator. Um, and it's it's really difficult on Twitch, on streams, because once we finish streaming, that content is effectively lost to the ether unless you have an editor. Now, I've had an editor off and on, Corpse, and he's done amazing work. I've paid him shit. He actually almost tried to convince me at some point in time to not pay him anything because once he got into my YouTube account, how much money I was making or not making, he was like, this is not profitable, dude. What are you doing? 
but I was paying him shit. I was paying, I'll tell you, I was paying $25 a video because I can't afford anything else. Right. And so, but, it, but, but the problem with, with, uh, um, with that is that it's not sustainable, you know? He's got a real job. He's got a family. He can't dedicate time to this stuff. And it takes a lot of work. Even in here, they talk about scouring through a um, uh, an eight hour an eight hour VOD. Uh, let's see. Yeah, here you go. Let's see. The tedium of cutting a VOD. The time it takes depends on the video. I've made some in four hours. Others can take days. A lot of the time really comes from the tedium of cutting a VOD down to exactly what you need or want for the video. And that's the hard part, man. It's hard to go through and uh, and if you're especially if you didn't watch the VOD, if you didn't watch the stream, now you have to go through and like find the moments that 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 work and make a video an eight hour stream, you know, <laughs> like or a four hour stream or however what however much it is. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot, a lot, a lot of time. Uh, but the streamer can't do it because we're under a constant deadline of making more things. People want more. People want more. Uh, and so we we end up in this loop where it's like. Okay, well, let me stream every day and let me see if I can find some way to put out content every single day to satisfy the people over on YouTube. And you end up stuck in this loop where it's like nothing. I'm not doing enough to satisfy everyone. And so this is where getting an editor and stuff would be would be beneficial. But you don't make a lot of money doing it. So it's hard to hire somebody. Right. Uh, something uh, Cena Anders does is press a button on his Go XLR that records a sample to his recording on a separate audio track, so the editor can see. Oh, the streamer thought this is a funny moment. Ever anyone else doing that? Yeah, you could put. You could put. You have a. Yeah, we have buttons that we could push to put markers on uh, on vods um, and all that. It's still a lot of work. It's still a lot of work. I mean, you could have a million markers, and it's still it's still tough. Um, Highlighting cuts and, and, and uh, cutting shit up as a pain, even for editing. Yeah, even editing yourself. I thought, I thought, like for me personally, I thought, you know, it's like, what if I, at the end of a day, um, like at the end of a stream day, uh, just focus on editing the stream? Well, if I did that every day, then I wouldn't have time for literally anything else. And even that takes hours to do. So I would just be like streaming for four hours uh, in the middle of the afternoon and then editing video for four hours from like, you know, nine o'clock to 1 a.m. And then waking up in the morning and doing all the other bullshit and for whatever other things I need to do. And all of that for what? All of that for one stream and one highlight video. There's for eight hours. Is that is there value in that? Doesn't really feel like it, you know? Uh, stream less, make bite size more content, less content to edit. Yeah, so yeah, that's that's the option, right? That's the option. Stream less, stream less, and then take the rest of the time to edit the content to make content that uh, that's evergreen, that will last forever, right? Again, a lot. We played stray. We played stray, and that that playthrough will never see the light of day. Never. If you watch me play stray, you're the only ones that are going to be able to see that unless you go back and watch the vods. Because I'm not going to take the time to cut that up and post it on YouTube. I don't have time to do that, right? So you hire an editor and you pay them trash. <laughs> this is why a lot of streamers just started dropping uh, uh, raw stream vods on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to poison the well on my YouTube channel for that. I'll probably make a new one for it, but but still, I mean, we see it happening all over the place. Uh, it's insane being an editor and being profitable. The few that I know literally keep needing to get more and more workloads. One guy even streams himself editing from time to time. Granny's a speed editor and can chop down a full six hour VOD into a 30 minute vid in like four hours if you watch the stream he's editing. Yeah, if I watch if, if I watch the stream or if I did do the stream, I could cut it down in a, in a pretty short period of time. Not like 30 minutes. It takes a lot longer than that because you have to, you because there's not just the editing process. There's also the, you know, the render, which is you would, the computer will handle that. But there's like, you got to make a thumbnail. You got to do the, uh, all the, uh, the metadata and everything. Then you got to upload it. You got to schedule it. You got to tweets going. Like there's so much other shit that go into every single video that the editing part becomes easy. The editing part is easy. Man, <laughs> it's just tedious. It's just tedious. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good, there's a lot of good and fair points made here, right? But when you render, your computer is useless. Dude, tell me about it. This is why I'm always in a fucking garage. <laughs> because I come up here and I'm like, do -do 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 just like the fucking cat gift. And then boom, render, computer fucking hunker down. Then I go downstairs. And the only thing I can play is like uh, uh, I play like Symphony of War, like real, real, like low power games, games that don't require a lot of cycles, right? And even those kind of stutter all over the place. And all that shit sucks. I have to do socials, Insta, Twitter when I release a new plugin or update for my plugin, and it's so annoying to do all that. Now do it every fucking day. <laughs> it's a lot. I know a lot of you guys. I know a lot of you guys feel me on this, right? A lot of you guys feel me on this. Um, now, now, 
Now that we're all on this guy's side, now that we're all on this guy's side, we got to point out the shitty part about this article. He had a great point bringing up the trials and tribulations of having an editor and being an editor and all that stuff. But he fucked up in that he's including people on this list, like in this fucking, in this thumbnail that he put up on, they put up on Twitter, uh, that are not even mentioned in the article. Pokey. Not one, not mentioned. Is Hassan even mentioned here? Hassan. Hassan. Not mentioned. So, <laughs> none of us are strangers to clickbait. None of us are strangers to clickbait, right? But we have to, we have to have to draw a line here somewhere. When you're painting streamers, generalizing who have editors in a uh, in a negative light, you can't just pick the most popular ones to throw them on there. Like if I was Pokey, I would be looking at some kind of like legal take down something because this is a bad look someone's gonna look at this or someone could i mean it didn't happen but someone could look at this and say what the fuck um also got caught out by many streamers editors update uh edit the article oh yeah no 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 they caught we're getting there don't fuck, fucking slow the fuck down jesus Christ, we're getting there poking his entire video on our team and paying them yeah good i think it's false shit there's uh some top editors in that thumb uh with some of their top editors uh in that thumbnail also got called mc uh yeah those who earn enough money can they can pay the editors well yes his article talks about that so pokey's editor also chimes in uh and she says or they say sorry um uh, pokey's editor and uh and channel manager here i'm sure some editors are exploited but i don't uh, but don't throw her name slash face on this for clickbait i'm compensated well and our prices for editors are competitive you should focus on actual problems instead of implicating big streamers with zero evidence um you know kit Boga also pays a dedicated editor yeah you have to in order to be successful here in this space, like like actually really successful now, you have to be able to meet the demands of constantly giving people content. Um, and and that content is is going to be something that sticks around. It's not going to be Twitch. Twitch is just a place where we could get on, we could do our show, and then hopefully some content could come out of that that sticks in your guys' heads, right? And makes you come back for more. The next step is editing it together so that way you can reach another platform that has another set of dedicated users that you could bring them back to your Twitch stream. Uh, there's a lot of people who are watching this right now on YouTube who never been, never come to my stream. And that's fine if that's your shit. That's fine if that's your shit. But that's part of a market that we have to maintain as content creators for evergreen content, exactly. You found, yeah, you found me on YouTube. I'm sure a lot of you guys found me on YouTube. Um, the writer probably tried to be an editor for, for a 5U Andy. Okay, well, so we're getting there. I love this. Nobody say fucking thing. Don't you say a fucking thing. Don't you fucking say anything. Shut the fuck up. Okay. I want to be the guy. I want to be the guy to put this out. Okay, anyways. So. $25 mic. Oh, God. Listen, man. We agreed on this price, all right? <laughs> we agreed on this price. <laughs> Damn it. And he, he, he was going to talk me down lower. All right. I was trying. Uh, anyways. So uh, 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 it, it, it was revealed that the author had a bad working relationship prior to making this article with another streamer named Fran. Uh, and so I was wondering how some of this stuff got tied in here. And then I found this tweet and it says here, she dropped me as her video editor because $100 per video was too expensive. So this is July 2nd. So this is this month, just 20 days ago, that the uh, the writer of this article um, had their own, what we'll call a conflict of interest <laughs> with another streamer named Fran. Now, Fran has been, uh, I guess, kind of out of the uh, out of the streamer business. Uh, Fran was a, a Fran... Started off as a uh, Halo player and then uh, later went to uh, Overwatch. Um, and now she is, she's kind of removed herself from the daily streaming thing, I believe. Uh, she's doing uh, IRL streams. She went to like Hawaii or something like that. She's doing IRL streams. That's how, I mean, I got caught up on some of her stuff because I was doing some research. Um, and uh, here's this article where she talks about basically, and this to me reads as if this is how, why she got out of the industry, uh, out of the streaming industry is because she made plenty of money doing nfts uh <laughs> travel streams with the new hotness i know um research 
<laughs> so, uh, so yeah, this is this is this is Fran talking a little bit about, and we're not gonna shit on her for this, but um, you know, they she does say that you know she got so fucking good at trading that I made more money in three months of NFTs than I did my entire five year Overwatch streaming career. However, profiting means that there has to be a loser because this is a zero sum game. Quite honestly, I was okay with this because if you're buying a picture of an ugly looking bear for twenty thousand US dollars, you deserve to lose your money. Don't get me wrong, I'm a rug pull victim myself and I've lost a few times. However, it's nothing compared to my gains. So she's she's stepping out because of of this industry because she's making a lot of money in another industry, ethically or unethically, however you want to determine it, right? <laughs> and so and Tyler took issue where it says here is that she dropped me as a video editor uh, because hundred dollars per video was too expensive. So now Tyler kind of looking like a whiny bitch. Kind of looking like a whiny bitch. Here's Fran trying to live, trying to live her life, her NFT lifestyle, her crypto bro, her crypto sis lifestyle, or whatever. <laughs> and then Tyler, Tyler's gonna go and just dig up some old shit from the past and go and make a whole article out of it. Uh, so it really, it really kind of undermines the validity of the article and the statements made, which is why I wanted to present it to you guys in reverse. Because now, if we go back into the article, it's like, oh my gosh, this whiny bitch with this whole thing. <laughs> yeah it's a rug pull market yeah for sure uh she's 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 honest in that regard um but uh but yeah it seems to me like there are some fair points made all around but everybody involved is kind of shitty everybody involved is kind of shitty ah <sighs> so there's more not related to this speaking of people being shitty twitch has a new shared band system that 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 people have taken some praise and some concern over let me go and turn this down a little bit so this is a shared band moderation system where you can um request area request it to cool cat you can have a shared list this is very similar to um people who have who have lists that they share to other Twitter users of like just like shitty people that, that you don't want to see ever show up in their timeline, right? Um, and so banned guns, yeah. Uh, so in this, let's go and stop it here, right? Boop here, perfect. Oh no no no, this next part here. Easily tag and monitor suspicious chatters, and boom, here we go. So shared band info monitoring, banned in cool cat and more. So so if Let's say, hypothetically, we ban ERA. Let's just say we ban ERA. He's not even here to defend himself. We'll ban ERA for fun. But then, because I share my my lists or whatever with a couple other users, now they'll see this person's ban and they'll be like, hmm, suspicious behavior. Maybe we'll ban them, right? They may not know that ban ERA is kind of a joke. Or maybe we ban guns for fun. Because we do that sometimes. Where do I look up all the guns bans? <laughs> I thought Torch just banned guns games. <laughs> well, I'm saying historically, historically, all right. Uh, and so the uh, the issue has been has been raised. I think it's a very valid concern. What if we don't know why that person was banned, and then we ban that person elsewhere? It's probably the most minor of issues. Like maybe a fraction of a fraction of a percent of people will be impacted by this. But it's a fair point. It's a fair point. You know, when you look up when someone was banned in your own channel, you could see the chat log with what they said. Right. But you can't do that in this system yet. Yet. So it's a good system. It's a good system, especially if you have a team of people that you stream with regularly and you have like a shared demographic or viewership. But it took years to even just make this. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Jordan brought up a good point. Is this, another, this is another, like, half-baked uh, feature that uh, that Twitch is putting out. So is it global? I thought it was shared among teams. It's shared among teams. Yeah, it's not global. It's shared among, um, I guess, whoever you uh, you send the request out or part of your team or whatever. But uh, this was saving me a lot of time when I was modding, like, 12 streams. Yeah, exactly. So people who mod a lot of streams, they'll see this as a value add for sure. But, but... 
if you're a mod in 12 streams, you probably don't know everybody in that channel. So if there is a guns type person in one channel and they're banned for fun because we like to ban people for fun. And then you're over here on, on the other channel and you see, oh, we're keeping an eye on this person or whatever. And you decide just to fire it off. It's like, I was going to ban this person just in case before they say anything stupid. I'm looking out for my streamer, right? You see what the problem is? You don't see the context of it. How about any user can just right click on a user's name and find out if they uh, if they were banned? They have some, that might have some interesting results. Serious in one channel, a troll in another. That's right. Yeah, you have to request and approve the people who can see the list. Thank you. Still, each channel is a different tempo. Yep, yep, yep. Sounds like Twitch is trying to make Twitch teams useful for once. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even think about that from that perspective. From that perspective, I think that's pretty good. It's like they're trying to make, they're adding features to the teams. The teams feature that. We've largely been abandoned. We're already looking, uh, uh, using it for a group of streamers that always play together. Yeah, it's perfect for that. Perfect for that. It's just I see their bans, also see the ban if you want. I figured it was an automated unban, ban unban based on other streamers' ban list. Uh, I don't think it's automated. It's not an auto automated ban. It just shows you like right here. That's why I pause it here. So shared ban info, monitoring ban, and cool cat and more. Right. So it's just going to show you. So so like uh, like Freak or if you if I say if I was sharing my information with uh, with Josh, right, and then uh, let's say you got banned over there, then I wouldn't see why I would just see that you were banned and I would be like, Hmm. And if I was just, if I was just s small, impressionable moderator, right. And I'm trying to look out for Mike B. I was like, Dude, Mike B is my boy. I'm gonna make sure nobody happens to him. <laughs> I was gonna ban him before anything happens. Bam. You'd be so proud of me. <laughs> um, I thought I was operating like a share black, more like a share blacklist. I don't believe that's the case. No, according to this, I don't believe that's the case. Um, a uh, man, if someone gets uh, uh, errors avoiding the puddles ban list, it's just people all the time. Oh, God. Yeah. Uh, Masamuni, thank you so much. Let's turn off, but thank you. Feels like it needs a short note added for a reason. Yeah, it just needs a short note. Well, I mean, I, I don't even know if a short note is a good idea because uh, then you rely on the moderators filling those things out. And a lot of times when shit happens, someone says something shitty, they're just going like, to just ban. The context of when they got banned would be perfect. That happens. That's already a thing. That's already a thing. You could see when people get banned, you could see on your channel, you could see what they said or where they said it. Um, so it's already it's already kind of a thing. Um, and Co Carnage, Co Carnage actually raised the same question. He says, this is an awesome feature. And Code's really good at this. He's really good at leading with like the positive, right? This is an awesome feature. Woo! But, <laughs> but I don't see anywhere that we can see why they were banned on other channels. Hmm. Contact is era. Era is enough said. Ban ever ex post, yeah. Ban first, ask questions later. There are, I mean, there are some channels that have such an influx of users and people talking all the time, they're just handing out bans left and right. You know, like probably 10 to 100 bans a day. Um, will the mods have time to add info for a ban? Exactly, exactly, Spudnik, thank you. Exactly the point I'm making here. Um, so I think don't make it a form to fill out. Don't make it, uh, don't add any more work for, like, don't add any more work for mods. Mods already are, like editors, the uncelebrated supporters of content creators and also unpaid uh, in a lot of situations, right? Right, mods? You guys aren't paid, right? I don't think so. Um, <laughs> uh, so don't make any more work for them. Put in a context, like, built in, and that's all you really need to do, I think. That's probably all you need to do. It's just a small thing. It's just a small thing content guy talking to developers it's just a small thing just work it in just work it in it'll be fine it'll be fine um i can see you now told dad joke permit ban oh man we can't have this guy in other streams can't do it can't do it can't do it shreds check that just came for the mail from mike yes boy that's like making extra money right there just got 10 20 last chat logs with the person per said yeah there you go something like that some mods are true some mods are truly unsung heroes that's right some not tanneros though that guy not kittens. Not lack. Uh, I still remember the terror it was to moderate the raid premiere a decade ago. Today, 25,000 is a small time. Oh, God, the raid premiere. Fuck. The comments. I can imagine the comments on that shit. Jeez. I, I mean, I can imagine the comments in the actual video itself. Josh. Uh, Corey, you get on. You come on. You get on. <laughs> I'm just a game supplier. I know. I was thinking about that today too. I was just like, "Fuck, man, he can play these fucking games." Anyway, so so moving on, we got we got some wholesome news. We got some wholesome news. Uh, uh, uh TwitchCon Amsterdam is happening right now. Right now, right now. Uh, I guess you can still make it there if you live down the street. You go check it out. Uh, uh, if you're here, you're probably not there. 
a whole bunch of streamers I never heard of, uh, but it's great. They're they're I mean, they're having a good time. I mean, this is great. They're having a good time, man. I I miss this. I miss this vibe. I was looking at um, wait right now, right July sixteenth. Oh, sorry, fuck. <laughs> Not right now. They're posting about this shit right now, but um, Twitch kind of has holding it. Yeah, sorry, it's over. I was gone for a week. Okay, cut me a little bit of slack. I was gone for a week. It was happening right now last week. <laughs> Anyways, uh, TwitchCon uh, for uh, uh, NA is coming up. It's in San Diego. It is September. No, it's October uh, 7th through the 10th, I believe, or something. It's somewhere around then. Um, and uh, 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 it's going to be, it's it's around Declan's birthday, so I'm not going to be able to make it. I was looking through all these pictures because they were posting them today on the Twitch on the Twitch. Uh, 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 fucking uh twitter accounts which is what got me in here started looking around i was like oh man this is happening right now I totally totally missed that it wasn't happening right now um you missed them ribs with the partner party i did i did but uh but everything looks it looks like they're having fun man it looks like they're having fun i just wish uh i wish i could go to one of these things but i'm looking forward to attending some more conventions um either later this year or next year uh see and the week after twitchcon all the major streamers are going to be on hiatus due to covid i mean i don't know if that's if that's if that's going to be quite as uh uh if that's going to be a thing. Is COVID even real anymore? No, I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> they all got COVID. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was trying to think of some way to go down like the crackpot side and be like, you know what I mean? We have to worry about COVID anymore. I can't do it, guys. Sorry. COVID's over. Remember, guys? <laughs> Mild symptoms. <laughs> Uh, you know, I was I was worried that we went to our family reunion and I was worried that we were going to walk out of that thing with uh, uh, with COVID. Um, but, you know, we didn't get it. We had we had a bunch of people that called out, though, because they tested positive for COVID. So I, I really got to attribute that to my family, really looking out for other family members. We have some elderlies in there and we have some elderlies who don't believe in vaccines and all that shit, too. Of course, of course, we can't blame them. Ugh, they're just stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I love them though. I still love them, but you know, we need other family members uh, to look out for them. And so that was good. And so, you know what, maybe, maybe that's kind of the same case here. Cause I haven't heard uh, 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 after following a lot of these other um, uh, uh, conventions, like we have SCCC happening right now, actually happening right now. Uh, <clears throat> we had TwitchCon happen last week. We have, um, what was the one before that? There was another big one before that. Um, Sneaker con. <laughs> No, but there's there's conventions happening all over the place. I'm not really hearing too much about breakouts related to them, but we'll see. Nobody's really reporting them anyways, right? Uh, looking out for uh, for other at other cons. Um, yeah, I know, I know. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Sneaker con, sure. Wedding con. I haven't watched that video yet. Though. I gotta watch it. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, uh, while they were there, that's right. I have this video that I wanted to show while, while it was happening. I don't know why I thought it was happening right now, guys. I don't fuck's wrong with my brain. Um, but, uh, uh, there was a, okay. So there was, there was a, uh, drive by that happened, uh, there. I had like two angles. Like I lost one of the angles, but this one COVID brain, I know. No, I think I was just mixing up SDCC cause I was looking at SDCC pictures and then also looking at TwitchCon pictures at the same time. So I just locked it in my head that it was happening right now. I was wrong. Like the song, uh, never, uh, November isn't, isn't here yet. That's right. Uh, STD con where you can, what do you have your first one? Oh, fuck. Anyway. So, uh, check this out. This is, uh, this is from Zokliev who a lot of us probably remember from space engineers really really fucking cool guy he's i got to ask him what camera he's using because this is beautiful anyways they're outside having dinner uh this is in uh twitch kind of amsterdam and then and then and then it happens all on to level part three it's incredible it's a completely different uh, September did you hear it? Dude, Did you hear it? Wait, what? Was that a BB gun? I think it was a BB gun. I hear like, wait. What's that? So I'll play it again so you can hear it. All on to level part three. It's incredible. It's a completely uh, so somebody on, I guess on a motorcycle, uh, 
sped by and uh, they had a some kind of like automatic BB gun or whatever. And they just started spraying into the crowd, right? And uh, so, some asshole did this S fan. I think it was the same. I think it was the same guys. I think it was the same guys that did it because there's um, airsoft is in there. Oh, sorry. So apologies. Um, <laughs> we don't call them BB guns anymore. <laughs> See, one of those uh, gel bead guns. I'm not sure. Is this the Vegas thing? No, this is uh, this is <laughs> no, this is a TwitchCon um, last week. Not right now. <laughs> uh, anyways, what I thought was really fascinating about this is how no, like hardly anybody reacted, right? I know it sounds fake. I know it sounds fake, but if this was, you know, a curbside eatery in LA and that happened, people would be hitting the deck because we here have been programmed that when the shots start flying, you get down. You figure out what it is after the fact. But there's no way everybody would have been super, super chill with driving by. It's everything happens at my local Walmart like every other day. Oh, God. <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're going to look. Yeah, she didn't look up for her phone. She didn't, she didn't look up for her phone. Dude, I just got shot. Wait, what? Dude, I just got shot. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that a space engineer's community manager? Yes, it is. Zakliev. Yes, he's the space engineer's community manager. It actually sounds like a replica space engineer's rifle there, too. Yeah, because mass shootings don't happen daily in countries with respectful gun laws. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But yeah, it's different, though. America go brrrr. <laughs> Almost sound like a poorly running vehicle. Yeah, it's hard to tell what it sounds like when you're actually there, but I feel like any kind of, any kind of like, rapid fire gunshot type sounds would, would have a lot of Americans just kind of Definitely not staring at your phone still. <laughs> Definitely not staring at your phone still, I'm sure. Uh, now, we got some wholesome news. I have a wholesome news section. Oh man, I don't know if I don't know if we could do this. Oh, we're we in we are in the wholesome news section. I just I just fucked it up by the drive-by thing. Um <laughs> How to tell if you're being shot. <laughs> Definitely still illegal in the Netherlands to do that. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure of opening fire with any kind of projectile based weapon is probably illegal uh, in most countries. Um, even like a slingshot, you probably get in trouble for that. <laughs> I'm sure there's some laws against that stuff. Mm. 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 Ah. Now, <clears throat> uh, so uh, uh, one, one one of two of our um, of our of our happy wholesome news. Uh, some of you guys know who Soy is. Zoe Gush Gushwind, she is um, she's a presenter, host. She works with Overwatch, works with Blizzard a lot. Uh, if you've paid attention to a lot of anything in the past, like Blizzard esports related, you've probably seen her. She kind of looks like Tracer, right? She kind of has that Tracer look, um, the hair and all that stuff. And so, and it can't she and she kind of hit big around the time the Overwatch was first taken off. She finally popped, which is a terrible thing to say, but she did. Uh, she finally had her baby. Uh, she was she was in uh, labor for 40 hours as she was posting updates and I was following I was following I, I don't even barely I don't even know her right I'm just I'm just someone who follows her on Twitter and been following all of her stuff uh, and I was like on, I was like on top of it, I was like oh my god oh because like 40 hours is a long time yeah 40 hours and then and then they had to they had to uh, uh, they had to actually do a c-section in order to get the baby out so she goes all the way back to early SC2. Yes, yeah. No, she's she's been around for for a very long time, um, but I feel like she really rocketed around like what 2015 or so, somewhere around there. When she when she stopped ex like working on StarCraft, I think is when she started really took off. <laughs> of course. Anyway, so huge congratulations to her baby born July 21st, uh, 2022. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean it's it's always it's, it's good it's good so it's good good just fucking good. Um, my wife wanted to kill me after 11 hours of labor. Labor, <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> no, I can't imagine what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh God, yeah. So congratulations to her. Uh, and then also, this uh, this one was kind of a weird one. Um, I don't know how much of this. Whoa, I don't know how much of this I can actually play because there's going to be a copyright issues and all that stuff. But but um, no, I've not heard about that. Oh, do they have a baby? What? 
So he said Tali, and I was just like, Mass Effect? Fuck. Uh, that kid is going to have a, it took weeks worth of work to get birth to you, Cart. Oh, man. Yeah, exactly. You did this to me type of deal, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens. Look what you did. Um, so, uh, 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 <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel has a show, right? We all are familiar with Jimmy Kimmel, and he has a show, a late show. Uh, and he was out for whatever reason, maybe a COVID or something like that. I'm not sure. Uh, and so usually when hosts are out, they bring on guest hosts. Usually they're like celebrities or whatever. Um, but in this case, uh, Jimmy Kimmel brought on Mark Rober to co-host or to, to to take over hosting of the uh, of the Jimmy Kimmel show. And he did. He actually did a pretty good. He did a really good job. He was super comfortable with it. We'll lower the music because that's probably what's going to get me. But yeah, Mark Rober. Motherfucking Mark Rober is out here hosting the Jimmy Kimmel show. Like, this is rad as fuck. I mean, for a co as a content creator, this is fucking rad. Right? <laughs> so, like, yeah, I, 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 I am, like, he's totally, okay. he's totally comfortable. He did a great job. This is great. <laughs> Welcome to Jimmy Kimmel Live. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so he, he he hosted the show. Um, you know what what I what I caught I, I watched a couple of interviews. Um yeah, obviously they brought in some of his antics, his YouTube antics into it. Um Hello, I am uneducated. Who is that? Uh, it, this this is like if uh this is like if uh if Will Smith, the YouTuber, made it big, right? This is kind of like that. So yeah, this is a this is a big step up for content creators. I think this is rad. Personally, I think this is super rad. Um, NASA engineer to YouTuber to late night TV show. Yep, yep, yep. I also have under a rug like Miss. Damn y'all, y'all know Mark Rober is. <laughs> You've seen his videos. He does like some weird like he does those YouTube like engineering videos where like I I devised a uh, an entire backyard uh, American Ninja Warrior uh, obstacle course to keep squirrels away from these nuts. He's nuts. Uh, he also did the glitter bomb. If, if you've seen any glitter bomb, like, you know, people steal their packages and a glitter bomb goes off, that's him. He started that. That's his shit. Yeah, glitter. Yeah, I think glitter bomb's probably. Oh, that. Yeah, see? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a scammer pranker dude. Yes, that's him. Uh, I've never heard of any of this. God damn it, crime. It's wholesome. It's wholesome. You need some more of that. You need some more. I'm not, I'm not saying go watch all of Mark Rober's stuff, but occasionally dropping a little bit of Mark Rober into your rotation might help you in the positivity feelings. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you've dodged all that? Jesus Christ, man. What the fuck am I even doing? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, this is just this is just one of those like proud moments, right? Proud moment, creator moments. It's just great to see somebody who started off just doing YouTube videos or whatever, right? Um, make it to this level where they're like, where they're like, big time man this is kind of like uh, uh hot ones like hot ones hot ones uh you know we see them now interviewing when they start interviewing like all these super famous celebrities and shit like all the now it's regular now it's regular now you just that's part of your stop part of as a as a promoter of whatever it is that you're promoting an actress as an actress actor or producer or whatever one of your tour stops for for uh, uh uh for pr is gonna be or market whatever pr is uh is gonna be on hot ones uh and it's just it's just the way it is now. So and um, so this is just another person who who made it. Uh, we kind of, uh, he kind of messed up the one time uh, sending a glitter bomb to an innocent person. But hey, yeah, you know what happens? Some people you sometimes you gotta get bombed, man. Uh, I used to watch this one dude make videos about wow. Now he owns TikTok. Whoa, whoa. wait you mean kind of crazy perform well in daytime television? What? I feel like the same thing. Weird. No, no. You know what? I, I, I could see I could see how a content creator could make it in that space um, and feel relatively at home, maybe a little daunting with all the people or whatever, but nothing will match the suffering that happened, both from the creator perspective, the host perspective, and the viewer perspective when when COVID hit and all of these late night talk show hosts had to sit there and talk to a camera with no audience and all of a sudden it became blatantly obvious who was made for this kind of work and who wasn't right for for that kind of zero feedback work where you sit here in an empty room talking to a camera <laughs> no feedback no laugh track if i get a lull in the chat then i'm like all right that was good 
sure it was 30 seconds ago, but it's fine. I got it. Ah, all right, let's go right there. What did he say? So Mike should take over the late night show. That's right. Oh, look at that. See, it's funny. <laughs> Seems like a fucking weird concept. I know. It helps out that he had a team of writers helping him out. Uh, also, uh, oh, 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 wait, who? Um, uh, uh, Mark Rober? Oh, they all. Oh, no, just in general. Yes, it's in general. Show hosts do. God damn, top. Fuck. God damn. Uh, moving on. Moving on. Let me see. Uh, Discord voice chats coming to Xbox. Kind of a big deal. I won't show sure the article, but kind of a big deal because uh, you got um, actual integration so you can talk and exist in Discord on Xbox. Uh, PlayStation, or uh, sorry, previously, you could only show a game you were playing by linking your account, which I think you could also do with PlayStation, but yeah. Pretty good shit. What is that? We definitely appreciate you, Mike. Know this. Uh, know this when making your YouTube videos and your loan sent. We're there for you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Discord needs a real competitor already. Discord cheating on a PlayStation with Xbox. They did say that they were going to work on a PlayStation integration, I guess, like a while ago or something. And that just never really happened. Um, so, so, you know. But, uh, yeah, the option is there for you guys now. I think that's pretty rad. Good. Get another one. So, it's more than PS got. Uh, that's kind of hilarious. Xbox favoritism spreading. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Raid call. A hot up and comer. Oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, let's see. Lastly, lastly, there is a there's a new movie that we that just got confirmed. And let me just let me just, let me just read this part here. Okay. It's a live action. All right. It's a live action. And it's going to be darker than the TV show. Okay. And it's, uh, it is going to be, I believe, written and starring uh, Daniel uh, Kaluuya, uh, who was in, uh, I mean, he's, he's in, what is it? He's in Get Out, Nope, and a bunch of other movies. You know his face. You think he was, I think he was also in, uh, yeah, he was also in uh, uh, Black Panther. Um, <clears throat> and this one, Darker than the TV show is Barney. That's right. Barney's getting a live action movie. It'll be darker than the TV show. What does that mean? <laughs> he just did a Hot Ones interview too. Oh, did he? Was it good? <laughs> it shows him eating kiss. Dear God, help us. <laughs> <laughs> no but it's like this i mean it's this is real i mean like daniel's like he's a real accomplished talented like industry person right with actor producer whatever uh and <laughs> he's taking on this project i don't know what to expect darker than tv oh god uh so like winnie the pooh you know that's all i was thinking i was like like winnie like winnie the pooh dark like because winnie the pooh's got a pretty i mean this movie by the way is released has anybody seen it yet Right, it follows Pooh and Piglet, Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Right, real movie, real movie. I believe this is out and released now. <laughs> oh man, it is a movie. Oh, you've seen it? Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, tell me you didn't know about this, guns. Are you serious? <laughs> well, look, Barney will be the next one up. Is it actually? I thought it was out. I thought it was out. I'm not sure. But oh no, the, I think the poster was really out. Oh, never mind. No, no, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But soon. Who the hell is granting these licenses? Well. Pooh is in the public domain now. So, but, but Barney's not. So I don't know what they plan on doing. Hmm. Even Winnie the Pooh is already darker than Barney. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe in this version, he does not love me and I do not love him. I love you. You love me. We are, oh, please now. That is in my head. That's right. That's right. Ruining childhoods. Oh, man. All right. So, that's it. That's it for the news today. This was a good one. That was a fun one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, chat. What is that? Is Pooh is public domain as long as he's not dressed like Disney Pooh. There you go. Don't dress up like don't dress up like Disney Pooh. <laughs> uh, let's see, also not looking forward to the live action. You you. Oh, yeah, I'm. Me too. Me too. Great news. Great news. This is great news. Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. Ah, chat. You guys are the best. Today was a good one. Lots of poops. There's a poops in the chat. Say goodbye to YouTube. Say goodbye to YouTube. Invite them over. They might come on. I'm not sure. We'll see. But thank you so much. It was a fun one. Bye, YouTube and Facebook, TikTok, Snapchat, and MySpace. What the hell? All right. You guys. 
Be good. Hang out. Because I'm coming right back for at least a few minutes. Okay? There was always a poop emote. What?